In the last episode, we covered the client side of the server browser. In this episode, we'll be covering the server side aspect of it. So I'm using a Godot add-on called Godot TPD. Uh, the link to it will be in the description below. It's a GitHub link. Make sure you go into project settings and then plugins and make sure enable to set to on. This will not work if it is not on. And then instead of creating new files, I just modified the example here. This was a scene already in the example and it has a script attached to it. It just extends node, nothing's really special here. And what we're doing is we're making a new instance of the HTTP server and then we're making a server router. So this can actually manage endpoints. And this server browser.new just extends HTTP router and it has a class name of server browser. That's how I'm able to instance it. So what we're doing is server browse is equal to server browser.new. And then we need to register our endpoints. So I'm just calling server.register router for all four of these times. So server.register router for backslash is server browse and then slash IP from hash is server browse slash closed server serve browse slash management slash admin. That doesn't work. We can get rid of that. And then we want to add the HTTP server as a child of this node. We want to enable cores. And then I'm using uh, the IP address of my machine, which is 192.168.1.78 at port 8066. This will allow you to port forward it. And then we're just telling the server to start. Now, some things I have noticed is that it doesn't always want to change when you call enable cores. So you want to go into add-ons, Godot TPD, and click on HTTP server and open that script up. And then you can change the port. So I changed it to 8066 and set the bind address to the IP of my machine, which is 192.168.1.78. Then then we can go back to our Godot HTTP server script here with the ready function and then we can navigate to the server browser class which seems like a lot at first but it's really not. So first thing we need to have a reference to is the servers. This is just an array of dictionaries and in the handled get we have a request HTTP request and response HTTP response. Now I don't think this HTTP request is the one that comes included with Godot and it is not. So first thing we want to do is if request.path is equal to the slash then we just want to respond to the request. So we do that by saying response.send status code 200 and then we just want to stringify the servers. So this will offload the servers dictionary to the client and then the client can do whatever they wish with it. That was covered in last video. We may want to do more than that. So if request path equals slash IP from hash, then we get every server in this servers variable. And then we check if it's hash is equal to the request body. And then if it is, then we send a response status code 200 and then i just say servers uh with the index i dot ip and then if for some reason that doesn't work we just send a status code of 200 with server ip we may also want to close a server so if request a path equals slash close server then we want to get every server in the server's array and we want to check if its IP is equal to the request top body and then we just want to remove that dictionary from that array. So we just do that by saying servers.remove that at the ith element. And then once again, admin, that's not really necessary. We don't need that. And then some other things we may want to do is actually handle post requests. So we don't need admin. So what we do is we say var json is equal json.new json.parse and then we just say request.body so this is similar to uh in the last episode when we were using godot's built-in http request class and we can get its body that's what this is doing pretty much and then we just want to say var server data is equal to json.get data so that's taking that json string and converting it into a dictionary that godot can use and then what we're doing is we're taking the server's array up here and then we're appending a new dictionary Dictionary has three keys. It has host, IP, and hash. Host is set to serverdata.host. IP is set to serverdata.ip. And the hash is using a built-in function in Godot called hash, and it's converting serverdata.host plus serverdata.ip. It's converting that hash into a string, and then that's our hash. And then we just want to respond to that request with a response code 200, and then we can do json.stringify. A lot of this really isn't necessary. However, it was included in the example project and I just never bothered deleting it. So I just replaced raw body with servers and then 
the client can use that. And to actually run this, what I did is go to export. It causes this really big window pop up. And then we go to resources, export as dedicated server. So when we build this, it will run as a console app instead of a more typical game kind of app. I found that it does cause your window to be a bit funky though sometimes gets too large. If that's the case, then just try changing this expo export mode and try resizing your window. If that issue still persists, then you might just have to build it as a standard, as a conventional project. Other than that, that's pretty much all the logic behind this server browser. So if you found this series of videos useful, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Helps our channel, helps get content like this for others. That's all for me for now. Fun Uber, out.